Hey everyone, my name is Sharon with the Cozy Junk Studio. I thought we would have a little chat before we get started with this video. So I am really loving green right now. It's one of my favorite colors. As you saw in the last video, I did a little makeover for my kitchen and I'm going to continue that with this video because it's, ha it's going to have some pieces that are going to go into my studio. This video is going to be about upcycling and altering things. My greatest love is altering pieces into something unique that you can't find anywhere else. It is a very messy video. I'll let you know that right from the beginning because I use a lot of techniques and a lot of experimentation, which I've heard that you all love. At least that's what you're saying in the comments. Now, don't forget to comment down below in the comment section and let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what projects you're working on. I am now affiliated with Aunt B's Attic. There are products that I use in this video that you can purchase at Aunt B's Attic. There is an affiliate link in the description box below. If you click on that affiliate link, it will take you straight to Aunt B's Attic. And once you purchase items, I will get a small percentage. What that does is that helps pay for the products that I use on this channel to bring these videos to you all. So I really appreciate if you use the link in the description box below. There will also be an Amazon link for any products that you can't purchase in Aunt B's Attic that I purchased off of Amazon. So check those links out below. Let's get on with this video. I cannot wait to show you all what I have altered to fit my style. The first piece we're gonna start with is this wood hanging wall shelf, I'm calling it. I'm not sure, it, I know it's vintage. It reminds me of like the 80s. So I'm gonna be using this tea light candle wax <laughs> to put some areas that I don't want the paint to stick to. I'm gonna be using some DIY black velvet paint and I really didn't need this because the stuff is just so easy to wipe back off. And I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with this at first. But like I said, I do end up using the DIY paint, which is clay based. It's easily to wet distress. I started out with some Waverly white, I think it's cottage white chalk paint. Then I ended up changing it, like I said, to the DIY black velvet. I wiped back most of that white paint and now I'm just going over it with the black velvet. I kind of wanted the right side of it to be a lot more wood showing than the left. I do wipe some back as you'll be able to see coming up to show more of that wood, but the piece ended up mostly being black, the black velvet. I'm using a water mister while I'm putting this on because I want this coat to kind of be sheer. At first, uh, it does end up covering more of the wood than I originally imagined this piece, but I end up loving it. the final turnout of this piece. Once this piece dries, I kind of assess it to see really what it is that I want to do moving forward because not a lot of the paint did stick to it, which was fine. I was wanting a more sheer look. Uh, but the black, the white that was left showed through, so I am sanding that back to try to get some of that white off. You can see with that white chalk paint being dry how much harder it is to remove than the DIY clay paint. I do love chalk paint, but that is the difference. You really have to work to get the uh, chalk paint to come back off after you get it attached to your piece. The clay paint, not so much, especially before it's sealed. We're just going to continue adding some more of that black velvet paint back to this to give it the look that I really want. Now that we have the piece dry, again, I'm going to go ahead and add a matte tough coat, top coat from Fusion onto this to seal my piece before I move on to the next step. Once I have my paint on, I kind of looked at this and decided that I really wanted it to look a lot more aged than what it was because it was pretty crisp and had no dents or dings in it. So I just took my hammer and really just hit it and scraped on it with my hammer on the edges to give it that more of an aged look that I wanted. I used my little finger sander as well to get some of those edges and take some of that paint off and I found a little metal piece in my stash that I used to kind of dig down into the wood with.
Now don't forget, you can slow down my videos in the bottom right hand corner under the settings. You just slow the speed down to what you want. I did go ahead and use some water and some sanding paper to sand back down to some of that natural wood. I did get a little heavy handed, so now I'm just going back in lightly rubbing over those places, not to cover too much because honestly, then you're right back to square one, which is fine. I love to experiment. You all will see a lot of times in my videos that I do the same processes over several times to get the look that I want. Some people don't enjoy that. It does not bother me. It's part of the process and it really just makes me so happy to do the different processes and the different experiments. Right here I am just adding a few like thicker pieces of the black paint to kind of mimic like there were spots that didn't get spread evenly and just to give it that imperfect look. I decided I wanted to add some crackle to this. Uh, so what I'm doing is getting my Mod Podge out and I'm going to just randomly put it on a few places and put some of the same black paint right back over it. I know generally people use it to show a different paint underneath, but I just want some crackling, not a two-tone color of paint. Now that our crackle has dry, I'm gonna go back over that with some sandpaper and to rub some of that back and make that also look a little imperfect to go along with the rest of the piece. Along with the sandpaper, I'm gonna be using this little blade here to scrape back some of that paint. Again, just to make it look aged and <laughs> piece now where I want it to be so I'm gonna go ahead and seal it one more time with some of the DIY dark and decrepit I love the aged brown look this gives especially to black so we're just gonna go ahead and put a light coat over it uh, not real thick because I don't want it to be very shiny this does have a little bit of a gloss shine to it not not real glossy but I figured the thicker I put it the shinier it might be so that's why I'm just kind of tapping and uh, brushing very very lightly over this. Once I get my coat on there full I want to go ahead and wipe some of it back again just to make sure that it's not too thick because it was given a little bit of a hazy brown look which was not my intentions. So I started with a paper towel and then I decided to get my wet or damp cloth and wipe some of it back so that it was more of a mixture of the black velvet and this dark and decrepit. You can get the DIY products at Aunt B's Attic, which again, the link will be in the description box below. These brushes I'm using are a one inch brush and you get 20 in a pack. I will list them below, they're from Amazon. I want to add this really old door plate to this piece. I purchased several of these with some knobs, which one of the knobs is laying there with this as well. I originally thought about using tacks or nails, but then I decided that I would use screws. I'm going to use this drill to put my screws in. This is my husband's. I do have my own drill and the battery was dead in it. I will link a drill from Amazon below that is very reasonable, like mine, that you can use in your crafts and, and not it's very small and lightweight. So like I said, I'm just going to drill these screws straight in. I did not drill a pilot hole. You can do that if you feel like that's necessary, but I didn't for this piece. When I first put these screws in, I did not tighten them up all the way just in case I needed to adjust my plate a little bit. I got them mostly all the way and then I finished tightening them up at the end. I'm going to use this JB weld to hold my pieces together. I'll link this as well in the in the description box below. You should be able to purchase this from Amazon. I got mine from Walmart. What it does is it squirts out the two parts of glue. You mix them together and then use them for your piece. This stuff is amazing. It is permanent. You'll see right here, I'm looking at the back of this. Don't forget to measure your screw to make sure it's not gonna come out the back of your piece. So I did have to change it, put a new screw in, not a big deal. 
Now I'm going to use this little flat silver metal piece to cover that screw up. It didn't, wasn't necessary. I just thought it'd be cool uh, to have this little cover on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the black velvet paint to this. Let that dry and then distress it back a little bit. Wet distress it and then seal it. I go ahead and add that sealer to the knob itself as well, just to give it a cohesive look. Now don't forget the photos of all the projects are gonna be at the end of the video. These next pieces is what sparked this whole video, the inspiration that I got from these candlesticks and these green dishes was off the charts. This is a brass candlestick to my right, and look at the patina on that. If we could only put that in a bottle and then use it. I was not about to clean that off. I don't care if it's brass. I wanted that green. And then this other piece, it set better and looked better upside down. So I really thought that I would be able to merge these two pieces together with these glass green dishes. You can see I'm showing you how the difference of that bottom looks tiny compared to the top. So as I was playing with these, I was trying to see if they came apart and they did because I put the green dishes on top of the pieces and they didn't sit flat. They also looked really weird, especially on the brass piece. The bottom is not quite flat, but it just didn't look right. You can see here, it that one would have been okay. It was the brass one that didn't look great to me. So when I looked at that brass piece, I thought, well, maybe it comes apart too. And it did. And then <laughs> see how that looked? I just didn't like it. It just looked weird. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take this part off. And then I had those extra pieces left. And I thought, well, hmm. I don't really love how there's not a base on the rock, the cast iron one there. I didn't like that it was just going to be glued to this little tiny stick. So I thought, well, maybe I can kind of make these marry in together. This screw was not big enough, but I knew with the JB Weld, it wouldn't matter that it would hold. So that's what I did. I used that and I found myself a base for this piece. Now, after I took the two pieces from the brass candlestick holder, I knew I had my base for the brass candlestick holder left from the two pieces. I knew that that would work, so I just had to get a screw that would fit down in there and hold that. So they both had a platform for the green dishes to adhere to. And so that's what I did. I love how these two turned out. I'll let you all sit back and watch. Now don't forget to let me know which is your favorite and let me know what you think about these two altered candlesticks. I am so excited to hear what you all think. Once I got the platforms on, the other piece I'm letting set dry, this one did not need anything. The screw held it in perfectly tight. I mixed up some more of that JB Weld and I'm just gonna place it on the metal piece. Now, I do this all around the center of the metal piece before I put my glass bowl on. And in the center, I go ahead and add a lot of hot glue. The hot glue is only the temporary hold, plus it's a filler for the space in between the bowl and the metal. What's going to hold this permanently is that JB Weld. This next project is a huge piece. I'm showing you it is a box. I purchased this at a Goodwill. It almost looks like it's an Asian piece because of the hardware that's on where the handle used to be. It is split wood and it's got a huge stain in it. So it's going to be repurposed and it's gonna stand up right with a knob on the top. I am super excited. So what I started doing was I started using just some white chalk paint to paint the bottom of this because I knew that this was going to take, or this that I was going to put a piece of decoupage paper on it. My vision for this is for this box to be green. So I started out with some Monet's Garden, the DIY paint, 
in a deep green because this dries a lot lighter and I have a photo here that I'm going to show you all of what I want this box to look like when it's finished. I love this. It looks old. It looks dirty. I found that off Pinterest. So that was my inspiration piece. I knew the stain in this box was going to be a problem. And here I'm showing you that it definitely was something very greasy or very sticky. So I went ahead and, oh, and I'm showing you that it cracked naturally. I'm going to seal this with some Mod Podge to hopefully get that sealed in to not cause me further problems. Once I got those places covered, I decided to go ahead and put some Mod Podge to do a crackle effect on some just random areas of the box. So you'll see here that I'm putting it, like I said, just on random areas of the box. Once I did that, I added some of that white chalk paint on top to give it a contrasting effect. I went ahead and used the candle wax method again on this box in certain areas as a resist, which it really wasn't needed as many layers as I did coming up. It, it just didn't matter. It was unnecessary. The next step is to add some of the black velvet paint over this box to give it another layer that's going to be underneath some of the greens and over top of that white. We're not going for full coverage. We're just going for another color to show through the sanding and the distressing back. As I do this, I'm gonna be using my heat gun to go ahead and crackle some more of that paint. To help smooth and make a thin layer, I'm also using some water to mist that with. This is where the whole experiment is coming in. Now that our Mod Podge that was sealing that nasty stain has dried, I'm going to go ahead and go back in with some of that original Monet's Garden green paint to cover that up. Now that our black velvet has dried, we're going to go ahead and bring back some of that original green color through by wet distressing as well as using a small uh, fine grit sandpaper. What this does is it leaves a little of the black behind, it leaves a little of the white behind, and it leaves a lot of the green behind. This was in the very early stages of trying to figure out how to layer this to get it to look similar to that picture that I showed you all. So I really wasn't sure. I just knew that I needed to layer a bunch of stuff to get my base and go from there. And I really wasn't happy with how the white kept showing back through so thick. So this gave me the opportunity to sand that white back even further to get just a hint of the white coming through for that full, for that end look. Now I'm just gonna distress all over the sides of the box, the edges, uh, and, and trying to work on those as I go along. So I'm not ending up with all the outside of the box done and none of the inside of the box done. All right, so here we are at the dried stage after doing that distressing back of the black. And we have several layers, including the original color. Now I'm going to start adding that more of a yellow green to get that final look that I want. I'm starting off with the Fancy Farm Girl. I think that's what that's called of the DIY green. And I'm going to go ahead and put a light coat over that, wiping back to as I go to continue to have some of those other layers come through. In addition to that, Fancy Farm Girl, I'm pretty sure this is some aviary that I'm adding as well to give a couple different green tones on top of the original Monet's Garden. You can definitely see how these colors are starting to dry. A lighter more yellow tone green. Now that those have dried completely we're going to go ahead and go in with the Gypsy Queen color which is an even more yellow green to give that there's a patch on this toolbox that is very yellowy green and almost centered and then has drips so we're going to use the Queen Gypsy Queen to give us that look. So I'm not going to put it on the whole outside. I'm just gonna kind of center it and I'm gonna keep spraying it with water to give that drippy look like the original photo. You can water down the paint and do like a wash or you could just add it on there thickly and then keep spraying until it becomes very drippy 
while brushing with your brush as I'm doing here. I'm pretty much going to do all the sides with this color and this effect. Once I get the outsides of the box done this way, I'm going to add some of this green to the edges and do a wash on the inside of the box as well so that it is more of a cohesive look. On the ends of the box, I just do a wash. I don't do the drippy here, but I do end up doing it at the end. Now you can see we have our box and it's dried and I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of clear coat on this because I'm going to do some black waxing and some black washing and I want these under layers not to be very easy to remove. I will remove some of them but I don't want to just wipe them back all the way through. So this is going to give my base a seal so that I can control how much I want to remove. So I started out with black wax, the DIY black wax on here because I thought that would give me the look that I wanted and I quickly realized that was not going to do it. It was gonna have to be the black wash and you'll see that coming up. What I end up doing is black waxing over the piece and it does give it a beautiful look. It actually tones that green down a lot, but I re when I, once I realized that I needed to do a black wash, I go back in with my sander and I do sand this black wax back so that the black wash can stick to it. All right, so I've already sanded back some of that black to give it a dull finish so that I can do some washing on this. Once you wax something, it gives it a repellent, just like a wax would on your car. So I needed to sand that back. I went ahead and did that. Now I'm mixing some of that green, the gypsy, green and then the or the queen gypsy or gypsy queen and some of the black velvet i've mixed both of those with some water to make a wash for these during this process i go ahead and i alternate between the i alternate between the fancy farm girl and the gypsy queen as well as the black wash until i get the look that i want you will notice that I do use my heat gun to dry after I put the wash on because it slows down the dripping. We want the dripping, but we also want it not to all drip, if that makes sense. We still want the drips to show, so if I hit it with that heat gun, it slows it down and dries those drips in place. Now that our outside has dried, we're going to go ahead and sand some of this back to bring some of those other greens and to do a little bit of wet distressing. You all, this process was long and I loved it. I loved it. it I shouldn't say it was long. It was just many things done over top of each other and I love the whole process. I love the experimenting. I love the outcome. I don't know what else to say other than this was just so joyful to me. I hope you all are enjoying this as much as I was recording this. So look at those colors coming through. Once we seal this, that is what it's going to look like. It's showing you this wet. So what I wanted to do was instead of those drips being so perfect, I took my sander, sanded through them, and then I took my damp rag and wet distressed them to give them imperfect looks like they had aged. Okay, so now we're going to seal up this box so we can go in and see if we need to do any waxing or really what the colors look like. 
You're not going to know that with the DIY clay paint until you seal it, unless you don't plan on sealing your piece. If you like the lighter colors with less definition, you wouldn't seal it. If it's something that you really want to see those colors come back, you're definitely going to want to seal that because that's when those true colors come through. I'm using my DIY new brush. Again, this can be found on the Aunt Bee's website, Aunt Bee's Attic website. I love this brush. I, I forget the name of it. I'll have it linked below, but it really does super coverage on this box because it's a larger piece. So I'm just using that Fusions Tough tough coat matte finish it's a top coat uh, you should also be able to find this because Aunt B's website sells fusion products I love how this turns out once we get that clear coat look at those colors showing through I love it now that we have this sealed it's time for that black wax you all to finish this piece off on the outside well almost you'll see coming up once you put your wax, your black wax on you can rub that back to give it the depth that you want. You can use it for shadows. It is so cool. We're going to go ahead and carry that on over into the inside of this box as well. To finish the inside of this box off, we're going to use Roy Cycled. This beautiful vintage typewriter decoupage paper is going to be on the inside. Now I decided to go ahead and put this uh, to where when I, my box was standing up that the original knob would be at the top and this would be uh, vertical. You'll see. I was not sure how I really wanted to do this, but after I decided to use my box to stand up or to hang up, the placement of this just fell into place. I did trim this back to fit the box. What I'm using is some Mod Podge. I'm going to put a light coat on and use the saran wrap method where I just, once I put the light coat on, I'm going to only do it in sections and I'm going to use my saran wrap to smooth it out as I go down. Once I finished my box, I decided to go ahead and do some stenciling on both outside pieces that would be showing when standing. So I have these ruler stencils I got from Jamie Ray Vintage. I These are not available on Aunt B's website, but I did get them from Jamie Ray Vintage website. Aunt B does have Jamie Ray Vintage products, but not this specific piece. So what I'm doing is just figuring out the placement here and I'm going to use that same black velvet paint to do my stenciling. I love this ruler stencil. I used it on a large piece of piece of furniture to make it look like an old measuring table that you would find in a boutique and I just I love it. All right, so we go ahead and use the second piece to go all the way to the end. This ruler comes, I'm pretty sure, in 36 inches. There are three pieces of the ruler. Once I finish anything of a stencil, I go ahead and do a light sanding. You want to be very careful because the DIY clay paint does sand back really easily. So I lightly, lightly sand over it and then apply more of that uh, Fusion Tough Top Coat. For the next side, I'm going to use part of this stencil it's a french stencil i did get this off of i think aliexpress i will link some french stencils below from amazon i don't have this specific one to link but i just use the address on here and not the rest of the stencil don't forget to use your stencils at a well, different the last ways. part on this drawer we're going to be putting something in place of where the holes of the knob used to be. 
I have this brass part of a lamp and I'm using another one of those vintage spigot or water spout knobs or faucet knobs, whatever you want to call them. And this brass plate, I really wanted to add some of that um, black velvet paint to it to give it a more aged look. Even though it's brass, it's still not patina enough to go with my project. So I'm just going to give it a couple coats of this, sand it lightly, and then seal it with that uh, tough coat. While I'm waiting on this piece to dry, I go ahead and use some of the black velvet paint watered down to cover the back of this piece. If you can look there, you can see all the drips from where we did the sides. So we need to go ahead and make that back look professional. I want some of those drips to show through. So I'm just going to lightly spray this with some water and put a light coat of that black velvet on the back of this piece. I do go ahead and seal that as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and wet or wet distress some of this back, bring some of that brass back through, seal this piece, and we're going to use a screw to in, um, to attach this piece because it's going to end up in a place that is not where either of these holes are because I center it. And the center of this drawer doesn't have that hole. So it works out perfectly. This brass piece covers all those extra holes, which I didn't mind because I love that it makes it seem like it's a architectural salvage piece. But I really wanted to cover them up with this made up knob or put together knob. I do go ahead and black wax both of, both of these pieces uh, because the brass was still a little bit shiny coming through. So I dark waxed over. The pieces and I sealed them both. Okay last but not least on this box we're going to take some of this dark wax. When I put the paper down it left an edge just a little bit that kind of went up on the walls of the drawer. So what I did was I went ahead and took the dark or the black wax and went all around those edges to blend them with the with the wood and to hide that edge that raw edge and then also to give that typewriter or that piece a vignette or like a shadow box style. I went ahead and rounded the corners off a little bit and you'll see that coming up with the black wax. Now don't forget the photos of the finished pieces will be at the end of this video including a vignette of all the pieces together. This next piece I don't do a whole lot to it. I love the shape of this shelf. It's very distressed. The paint is sheer it could have probably used a second coat whoever painted it. I did not paint it. I'm leaving it the original paint. I'm going to distress this back with uh, some sandpaper and we're going to add this door knob plate to this one as well. Once I sanded this and got this the way that I wanted, I went ahead and put a coat of clear coat over it just because the places where I sanded were a little dry and I wanted them to, to darken those up a little bit. This uh, so I use that fusion top coat on there. And then we're going to take this uh, back plate for a doorknob, uh, vintage obviously, and we're going to add some of this black velvet paint to it. Now I want to go ahead and add a, almost a full coverage and then I'm going to wipe back or wet distress some of the copper back through this plate. Once we, or once I get the piece the way that I want it, after I do that wet distressing, I'm going to use that same matte tough top coat from Fusion to seal that piece. Once we seal it and that dries, we will go ahead and add some of that black wax to this. Once that plate dries really well, we're going to go ahead and center that and use it as a focal point on this shelf. I'm going to go ahead and use the screws and use the same method as I did in the last shelf that we did, using that faucet knob for the centerpiece. So if someone wants to hang something, they can. Okay, are you guys still with me? I'm sorry if I felt a little sound a little tired at this point. But we are on our last piece. We're going to be using this metal lantern 
and it has a glass globe in the center. I'm going to be doing a wash on this. I do start out with some Gypsy Queen with a little bit of Aviary and some Monet's Garden. So what I ended up doing was mixing some of these together and started to do a wash and you'll see I didn't the consistency just wasn't what I wanted. I started stippling it on and then decided that I was going to add some salt wash. I got my salt wash out and I put a scoop in there and started stirring it and I realized that that was not going to be enough. So I ended up putting I think almost two full scoops in this to get it to a very very thick consistency and when I say thick it ends up very thick but the look worked out so well on this it really gave it a textured look and once I went back you'll see coming up I don't want to give too much away but see how much salt wash I put in that tiny bit of paint I know you can mix it. It does say mix it equal parts, I'm pretty sure, but you can mix this to your liking. Or at least that's how I feel about it. Now comes the fun part and the messy part. We're going to do that same black wash over this that we used on the box. And you all, I love how this ends up looking. When it dries, it's not as harsh as it looks now because that's how the DIY paint does it dries a lot lighter however I do go in with some black wax as well to mesh the two colors together now I do use my spray bottle to mix this in all right I'm just gonna sit back and let you guys watch this Once this dried, as I was looking at it, I just had this feeling that I needed a pop of dark green. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to drip some spots on different places of this. Like maybe someone was holding this lantern to paint something green and it dripped down on it. You know, it's a cool story. It could have happened. This lantern ends up looking very old, very dirty like someone used it forever and it just got so dingy. All right, so let's get on with this drippage. All I did was mix some Monet's Garden with some water until I got the consistency that I wanted. Oops, nope, I lied. Looks like I add some Salty Kiss in there too to brighten that up a tad. And then I use my long brush that has just a small tip on it to do my dripping because I just wanted small areas. Now that that last layer of the dark green or the bright green has dried, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of distressing, including wet distressing and sanding to give it the chippy look that pieces have chipped off over time. Next, we're gonna add some of this uh, Tough Matte Top Coat from Fusion. We're gonna get that dried and then we're gonna add some black wax to this and this piece is finished. Now let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite and if you're gonna try any of these techniques. Also, don't forget the links mentioned throughout the video will be in the description box below. I can't wait for you all to see the photos which are coming up next.
I hope you all have enjoyed this video and I want to say thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.